It is as Russ. <laughs> if you watch some past videos, you know what this is if I'm out here in the garage. Yeah, time for another bike. Let me show you what we got. Yeah, this is the KBO Breeze Step Through. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be nice. Let me give you the walk around here. Now we had a little bit of uh, damage to the box on this side, but I don't think it went through. So it should be okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm excited. This is a commuter bike, which means it's not a fat tire bike. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this one. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be different. This is a bike I actually requested. I contacted KBO and uh, told them about my YouTube channel and I said, you know, Maybe it would be good if we got together and did this. So I'm gonna show you the inside real quick. Hold on for a second. Yeah, I'm just like a kid in a candy store. This is just fun stuff. Let me get down a little bit in there. So we can see that the, uh, the bike is very well packed. Lots of foam, lots of zip ties. That's the way to do it. Let's see if there's anything in here to take out that's worth looking at. No, it doesn't look like, I think I have to actually take the entire, the entire thing out first. Yeah, we'll do that. Let me take the whole thing out. Hold on. Okay, for this one, I laid it down a little bit. It's leaning against the box. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, the tires actually have uh, protection on it. Yeah, they've got these these nice blue cloth things protecting the tires too. Wow. A little bit of attention to detail there for sure. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. Can't wait to build it. Okay, now I'm not going to do a build for you because there's plenty of other ones uh, as far as videos are concerned, out on the internet, you can see it being built. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and bring it inside to build it. It's really hot today. I think inside this garage is over 90 degrees right now. So yeah, we're not staying in the garage to do this. I'll be sweating. So uh, yeah, let's build it. I'll show you what the bike looks like after I'm done. Okay, let me show you the KBO Breeze Step Through. I think most people, when they first see this bike, they are just amazed at how beautiful this bike is. <laughs> the lines are just so clean on it. Let me give you an overview here. Now this is a bike that I actually reached out to KBO for. I, uh, I wanted to try out a commuter style bike that was a pure step through bike and I had heard about this bike before, and I said, this might be the bike that my uh, viewers would be interested in seeing. So I reached out to KBO, and I mentioned to them that uh, a lot of my uh, viewers might be interested in their bike, because a lot of them are interested in step-through models, because it's a little bit easier. Uh, most, of, uh, most of my viewers are actually seniors and so they uh they would appreciate a, a true step through bike and when i saw this one i said this this one is just it just looks so good <laughs> so of course we want to make sure the performance is good but let me tell you a little bit about the bike here so right up on top here is the display screen you can see the screen is actually off to the side it's not like right in the middle like many of the other bikes that are on the market. It's just right on the side here. But all the critical things that you need to know are here. So you've got pedal assist levels that can be changed. You can see it's a one through five. All right. You've got your speedometer up on top. You've got your wattage meter. Let me turn it back on here. I actually uh, had it on for a while. And you'll see that you, know, you have uh, trip meters, You've got uh, odometer settings, your maximum speed, 
your average speed, how long you've had the bike on. Well, I just turned it on <laughs> again, 15, 16 seconds here. And, uh, and your wattage and how, how hard you're actually pushing the bike. Um, there is a bell right here. So that comes right, right on your, uh, your brake lever. And here's where I thought it was really interesting. This is an integrated battery. Now, if you look at the lines here, nothing sticks up. It's part of that down tube. In fact, if it wasn't black and it was only white, you wouldn't even know this was an e-bike. <laughs> Chain guard is metal, brake pedals, Shimano Altus uh, derailleur, which is kind of typical. We see this on, on a lot of uh, e-bikes now. The freewheel is made by Shimano. It's also labeled Shimano. The tires are 27 and a half inch tires and they're made by Panasonic. So the width of these tires are, I believe it's 2.25 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Your controller is outside, which I always like because I always like the ability to go ahead and fix things. If something goes wrong, I can get to the controller quickly. They do include a bottle cage. You know, the position of the, of the pot bottle cage is not the greatest, but all of these bikes never have good mounting places for, for bottle cages because the batteries are always in the way. So they, they do give you one there. Saddle is actually fairly comfortable. It's not too bad. The rack in, is included with the bike. The fenders are included with the bike as well. Now, earlier reviews from other reviewers had said that the Fenders were really difficult to deal with because the distance was very close. Not anymore. They've made some changes. Now, because I had seen that in other reviews, when I assembled this bike, the first thing I did was I put the fenders on just to make sure I wouldn't have a problem, but no, never had a problem. Plenty of space in between now. Let's take a look at brakes here. Brakes are 180 millimeter rotors. Um, these are Tektro uh, brakes as well. Now, most of the Tektro brakes I've seen in the past were labeled Tektro. These are not labeled, but they do accept the, the Tektro um, brake pads. Now, admittedly, when I first got the bike, I did have a little bit of problem with the brakes. It was uh, squealing in the front brake, but it wasn't squealing in the rear brake, okay? So I reached out to KBO and I said, hey, I've got a problem with the bike, it's squealing. And uh, so what they said to do was um, to get um, some Tektro brake pads and also a new rotor. Uh, and, and it's not necessarily that both of them needed to be there, but we figured it would be faster to get them both. And then if there was a problem with both things, I can change them out faster and I can get the review out quicker. But uh, I just changed out the brake pads to the Tektro brake pads and they're a little bit different brake pads than what came with it. And that's what made the biggest difference. It stopped squealing. So really, it wasn't the brakes. It was just the brake pads weren't good. I don't know what caused that or maybe we had a bad set of brake pads, but no problems. The brakes stop on a dime. They're really good. And these are mechanical disc brakes, but yet they still stop fairly well. I'm really surprised. You know, I initially thought, okay, we're gonna have problems with brakes. Not really, it was just a bad brake pad. That happens sometimes. So, but what I do appreciate is that KBO uh, immediately told me, go ahead and get the, uh, the pads, just buy it on Amazon because it'll be faster to get it to you, uh, which is true, Amazon delivers a lot quicker. And uh, I was able to do it and take care of it. So uh, yeah, kudos to KBO for fixing the problem for me real quickly. And if you buy the bike and you have that problem, reach out to them, you know, they're, they're pretty responsive for that. And uh, maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's just a, a change of a brake pad and it's very simple to do. Let me show you the headlights here. I don't know if you can really tell in the sunlight. Uh, headlights are powered by the battery. Same thing with the tail light here. It is powered by your battery. And of course, if you pull on the brakes, let me see if I can do this by holding here, it will flash. So overall, yeah, the bike is very, uh, very simple, but effective. 
let's take a look at the uh, at the throttle here. Now the throttle does not come with this. I added this to the bike. I, I like thumb throttles personally, so I added this uh, 3D printer uh, thumb throttle to it. But it is a typical half twist throttle that comes with it. And again, the uh, gear shifter is Shimano. As far as getting through the, uh, the step through, yeah, it's not a problem. It's about as low as a step through can really get to and still be strong enough to hold. You can see the uh, center actually is reinforced right over here. And it's just a, bit, a little bit above the, uh, the chain ring. So overall, um, it's a great bike for, for step through if, if you're looking to get over it. And a lot of my uh, viewers I know are senior riders and uh, getting over the bike is, a, is an issue. So I wanted to find a bike that might be good that would be able to do a step through easily and still be able to control ourselves so that we uh, don't have to lean the bike over while we're, while we're mounting it or dismounting. Now, the one thing that I, I do like about this bike as well is that uh, it, it does have a very smooth ride from what I've ridden so far. We're gonna do a ride test in a minute here. And um, the tires being not a knobby type of tire because I'm used to big four inch fat tires that are knobby. These are street tires, okay? And because of that, it's very quiet. It's very smooth too. I, I feel like, kind of like I'm floating because of uh, the feel of it. Uh, you can pump these tires up higher. I have these tires pumped up right now to about 30 pounds of pressure on each uh, tire. And that is the recommended tire pressure in the manual, but although I know that the the tires do show that it can go higher than that, but I put it at 30 and it's fine. I'm a heavier rider, as you know, I'm, I'm 250 plus pounds and uh, it holds me fairly well, not a problem at all. Now these, uh, the, batter the battery is actually quite capable. It has very long running battery on there. And um, that's, I think, a, a key so that you can get some distance out of this bike. We'll do a range test on the bike, too, to make sure we know exactly how far we can go, especially for me, which is, which is an important thing because I am a heavier rider. And there's a lot of uh, factors involved in, in uh, you know, your riding distances, your weight, wind, you know, tire pressure, whether you're going on a steady, uh, um, even path or you're going up and down hills. That, that plays a factor. Now, the motor itself is a 500 watt motor that peaks at 750 watts. Now, we know some bikes out there have a similar type of rating, although they may rate it at 750. That may still be their peak thing, but they may only have a 500 watt motor in there anyway. So, this one actually comes out and tells you it's a 500 watt motor, but it peaks at 750 watts. And believe me, it does do well. I've taken it through uh, various things so far. Well, again, we'll do a range and a riding test soon. And you'll see that it has no problems going over hills. What I do notice though is that it does take a little time to get started. So if you're looking for a bike that you know is, is gonna move really fast right off the line, this isn't the bike for you, okay? But it wasn't designed for that. This is a commuter style bike, you know, like an everyday type of bike. And uh, although it doesn't, you know, it's not the fastest bike uh, right out, out of the gate, it maintains its speed and it does it well. So I was able to do 22 miles per hour. That is the maximum speed on this bike. Um, it is uh, a class two bike, which is typically 20, but this one goes to 22. But yeah, it was no problem getting to 22 miles an hour, but it takes a little longer to get to the 22 miles an hour, okay? Whereas other bikes, you know, you, you start pedaling or you hit the throttle hard and immediately you're, you're up to that speed already. This one doesn't do that. This takes a little bit longer to get there. But uh, I also recognize too, because I am a heavier rider, that plays a factor as well. So let's go ahead and take this bike out for a ride. We'll see how it goes. And then uh, you can make your own decisions. But so far I've been fairly impressed with what I've seen so far and uh, my riding test up to this point. Let's get out on the bike, let's give it a ride. All right, let's take this bike out on a ride. It's a little chilly this morning. <laughs> Our weather has been up and down for the last couple weeks. 
we were in the 90s, then we dropped to the 80s. Right now we're in the uh, upper 50s. <laughs> So I'm taking this KBO Breeze step through out for a, a ride. And uh, as I mentioned, I am a 250 plus pound rider on this uh, commuter bike. Now I'm used to big fat tire bikes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to an area that has a, a hill climb this is uh, an area that many of the Russ's Right viewers are familiar with. And because this is a 500 watt motor that peaks at 750 watts, we want to see if it can actually climb that hill. So the area that we're at right now empties out into a sidewalk area, which is legal for us to ride on because that's the only way to get to the rest of the path. Overall, the ride has been very smooth. These tires are smaller than I'm used to. At uh, at 2.4 inches wide versus the 4 inch tires I'm used to but because they are street tires there's no knobs on them which means it's gonna ride really smooth now typically with less rolling resistance we should get better mileage as well we'll do a range test another day but today what we want to find out is how does this bike handle going up hills? Now we're pretty lucky out here. We have some decent bike paths to go on and uh, that's made a big difference to me. Thank you. You always got to be on the lookout for kids. You never know what kids will do. Now I'm doing a combination of pedaling and throttling. This is how I typically ride. So I want to make sure that it can do that. And the nice part is, just like all my other bikes, when I throttle, no matter what pedal assist level I'm at, I have full ability. On your left. So if I throttle hard, I get 100% of the power level that this bike can give me. If I throttle, throttle a little bit, I get a little bit. So if you keep an eye on the display screen on the left here, you'll see what our mileage is as far as uh, the speedometer is concerned, how fast we're actually going. But also there's a, a wattage meter on the bottom here, so it tells you how much watts are actually being put out from the battery going to the motor. So when I don't throttle, you see the wattage will drop down to zero. When I do throttle, you see it start moving, all right? So you can kind of get an idea of what we're really doing here. I'm gonna cross this bridge here. Now I've been on pedal assist level three the entire time. And if you notice too, I haven't touched the, uh, the speeds here. I haven't gone, like is this number five? I haven't gone to down number four. I don't really need to do that because I'm going relatively fast. I'm gonna hang out typically around uh, gear six or gear seven. As we go faster, we're gonna need to move it to gear seven just so that our pedaling will keep up with uh, how fast the motor is pushing us. Now the ride overall on this bike is really smooth. 
It does have a front shock, which is adjustable. But I'm telling you, the tires make all the difference in the world. It's, it really does feel like you're kind of floating a little bit. It doesn't, I don't really feel the bumps much at all. So if you see here, we're kind of averaging around the uh, 17 to 20 miles an hour range. So we're going uh, at a pretty good clip. And we'll get closer up to the area where the... <laughs> where the uh, incline is. You want to call it an incline, you want to call it a, a hill, but either way. Now, the one thing I have noticed with this bike is uh, it's very smooth in terms of the motor, in the sense that you don't get, you don't get jolted by the motor when you pedal. You don't get jolted by the motor when you hit the throttle. It is a very smooth transition from no assist to some type of assist. That could be a big difference for someone who's uh, new at riding an e-bike. I mean, some of the bikes that are out there, you hit that throttle, <laughs> you've got a lot of power going out of there. If you hit that pedal, you've got a lot of power going out. And so, the initial hit is a little bit more than people are used to, but not so with this bike here. If I hit the throttle, it's a very smooth transition to some type of assist from the motor. I don't feel any jolting at all. But also, because of that, it also does not seem to uh, react as quick, like if you were if you were hoping that this bike will, will move, move you from stop to, 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 to 20 miles an hour in an instant, it's not going to do that. But it wasn't really designed to do that. This is a commuter bike. This is a, kind of like your everyday bike. You could take it around town. You don't want to be jolted off of the bike. So in that regards, it's definitely different than some other bikes. I mentioned before that uh, many of my viewers are senior riders. I would tend to think that this might be an important thing to be happening for you. You want, you want to be smooth in your transition in the motors. You don't, you don't want that heavy jolt. All right, once we pass this area, we get over the, the bridge that we're coming up to. That's where we're going to have that small hill that we usually climb and many times um, the bikes have a problem getting up there. So I'm gonna move us to pedal assist level five and I'm gonna do it the same way you did it with the uh, other bikes. I'll start pedaling once we get past this bridge. All right, so I'm gonna go to gear seven and just keep an eye on the speedometer. We're going up the hill at this point. So we're going up at close to 20 miles an hour. Will it make it? Now typically the things will start dropping. And we see it dropping now. We're almost at the top of the hill. And we're down to about 13 miles an hour. Now that's very typical of what I was getting. Uh, I'm gonna lower us back down at this point. It's very typical of what I was getting with my Rad Rover 5. Now keep in mind too, the Rad Rover 5 claims a 750 watt motor. Um, many people don't feel it really is. <laughs> the Magic Cycle actually was able to go a lot more, but that bike has a huge torque and uh, it's, a, it's a bigger bike in general. 
they were designed for different things. But those bikes too feel different. They, they don't have quite the, uh, the smooth ride feel that you might have on this commuter bike. What I like too is the fact that this commuter bike is a total step through. That step through height is really low. It's about as low as it's gonna be able to go <laughs> and still have rigidity for the frame. So uh, I have typically swung my leg over on both the Rad and the Magicycle bikes, but uh, this one, I step right through it. Yeah, it's not hard. And coming off the bike, same thing, I just step right out of it. So this is a true step through bike, for sure. All right, I'm gonna take you to another area where we have some additional hills. It's off into the forest preserve area. We've done this before in the past. And uh, we wanna see how this bike performs. Now, granted, we don't have a whole lot of things on the bike. The Rad Rover 5 typically is loaded down with a lot of things on the bike. So uh, that bike usually does, you know, when we go over that hill, we'll drop to the 12. <laughs> Actually, it's dropped down to even nine miles per hour. Thank you. So uh, one thing I have noticed too, that although this bike has a bell, the bell is not quite as loud as some other bells that I've had on bikes. It's just a side note, you do have a bell right here, but I don't think it's loud enough. I think it, it could go for a little bit more volume level. Something maybe they can improve in the future. And once we're, while we're on the topic of things that I would like to see, um, I would like to see a, a front basket option on this uh, bike. I think that would be nice for a commuter bike to have. But uh, there is no front basket option on this bike and there are no uh, provisions to add one either. All right, so I've hopped off the bike. And getting off the bike is easy because I'm straddling this bike. You can see I can move this bike one way or the other because there's nothing in between. That's one of the advantages of the step-through design. All right, let's get into the forest preserve area. I do like the cable management on the bike. You can see here, everything is tied off really cleanly. So the wires are not hanging all over the place. They did a good job with that. And the clean lines really makes a big difference. I, I bet you anything as I'm riding past people, they're probably not even knowing that this is a knee bike. There's no battery that sticks up or anything. All right. I'm gonna show you an area that I typically ride on. Is this is really designed for, for the bikes to go on um, to get across. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take the area where the cars ride. Sorry if I'm uh, sniffling a little bit. It's still kind of cold out here. So right up in front here, if we turn right, that's where bikes typically would go. It's a, it's a shortcut. We're gonna take the long way around it. <laughs> and, uh, and that's because this, this has an incline here. There's, there's a definite rise. And so if you're not able to ride something like this on a regular bike, you wanna take that shortcut. But with the e-bike, getting up over this hill is really not a problem. Now I'm doing what I typically do. Uh, I tend to throttle and pedal at the same time. Now you could also just simply use your pedal assist levels, move it up to pedal assist level five and pedal it up there or throttle 100% yourself. But throttling by itself typically is more of a strain on the motors. So 
doing a combination of throttle and pedaling helps the bike out. Or like I said, let's move to pedal assist level five. And you'll see based on the wattage meter down here, when I pedal, it'll tell you how much power is actually being given to the rear hub motor. You see, it's, it's hitting 880 watts, 848. It gets up there. As long as you keep your pedal moving, um, there's plenty of power. You can see also on the battery meter, the battery will drop in power because you're, you're outputting a lot of power to the motor at this point. And we got over that hill without a problem. Again, now as I'm coasting, battery goes back up, wattage goes to zero because I'm not pedaling. We're gonna hit another hill up over here. And the thing is, if you know, if you do a full stop here, well, as close as it is, I can go without falling off the bike. Um, you're starting from scratch, essentially. There's no momentum going up. So I'm pedaling. I gave it a little throttle as well. We'll go to uh, gear seven. All right, we're gonna go up this hill. I'm just gonna pedal, I'm not gonna throttle. This is a fairly large incline right here. We're still do 20 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, this bike can do it. So when people say that, you know, you need the 750 watt motor, sometimes you really don't. Because you can do the same thing with this 500 watt motor that peaks out higher than that. This is a tough intersection to cross because cars are going at like 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour. So yeah, overall, this bike is doing it. It's giving us uh, enough power to go up the hills. It's giving us the smoothness that many people like. We don't get jolted off of the bike. Yeah, it's a nice ride. Now I know regular Russ's Ride viewers are gonna ask me, are you gonna plan to keep this bike or are you gonna sell it off after you've done the review? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> my wife has already claimed this bike. <laughs> she says this is gonna be hers when I'm finished. I can see it. I know why. <laughs> she likes the looks of it. She fits it. Um, she was riding a folding bike up to this point. She wanted something a little bit bigger. Well, you, she's going from a 20 inch tire to a 27 and a half inch tire. It's actually bigger than my tires. My tires are 26 inch by four inch, of course. These are thinner, but these are a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger tire overall. But we, uh, we put her bike up against this one and really uh, it's not that much bigger than, than you might think. You know, uh, we, we looked at it and said, okay, the, uh, the frame is a little bit taller up here, but you know, overall the, the handlebar is about in the same position where that bike is. Her seat would be in the same position. She says, yeah, that's not that bad. And this bike actually is actually lighter in weight <laughs> on top of it. What is this bike, 63, 64 pounds, something like that? That's actually lighter than the other bike. So she feels that she can handle this bike better, so this bike is going to her. So yeah, this bike is gonna be kept in our family. We're not, <laughs> we're not selling it. Now, the one thing that I will do as a modification to the bike, and that's not something uh, against KBO or anything, it's just a, a preference. Um, the stem right here is a little bit longer than it would be right for her because uh, she's only five foot four. She, uh, she prefers that the handlebar be a little bit closer to her. 
Well, I said that's an easy fix. All we need to do is replace this stem right here with, uh, with one that comes in closer. So I already hit, went ahead and purchased it on Amazon. It's $10, it's not expensive. And it's easy to change because there's two screws right here on the side. Once you unscrew this, the stem comes off. Put the new stem on, put the handlebar on it, it'll be closer for her. So overall, she'll be happier. It'll fit her better. Even for me, I lean a little bit forward on this bike because this stem is longer. So maybe it'd be better for me too, I don't know. <laughs> it might actually be a little closer than I prefer, but um, that shorter stem will work for her. Now, since we're talking about the stem, let me bring up another thing too. When they shipped this bike to me, this stem was reversed. In other words, you see this is actually facing forward here. It was actually turned facing backwards. Now I asked KB, KBO if all the bikes get sent that way or was it just a, just a fluke thing that somebody installed it differently and they said sometimes it is installed <laughs> the other way around uh, but what you want to do is if you, when you get your bike you want to take this stem it needs to point forward okay this stem needs to point forward not backwards so all, all I did is I loosened up the uh, screws here and turned them because like I said, this stem comes off really easily. So uh, make sure if your bike is like that, you wanna make sure it moves forward. So these are just some little odds and end things that uh, I noticed when I got the bike. You know, just as full disclosure to let you know the things that I noticed that are good, things that I noticed not so good, okay? <laughs> I mean, if nobody knew that they needed to turn that around, they'd be riding this bike with the stem facing backwards. <laughs> So you don't want to do that. So overall, do I like the bike as far as riding? Yeah, I do. Uh, is it for me? I think I think I would. I'm more of a fat tire bike person, but I can see the benefit of this. If I wanted something that was smoother in riding, if I wanted something that. Uh, was not as noticeable to the public because <laughs> really with the big fat tire bikes and the big heavy frames that I ride you know everybody steers it at you there, there's no way they're not going to with this bike if they're steering they're steering because it's such a clean looking bike the lines are so clean and like I said I think a lot of people wouldn't even know that this was an e-bike if they didn't look close enough, the, the only thing is that, you know, the battery is black. That's the only giveaway that it's an e-bike. If, the, Like I said, if it was white, you would never know that this was an e-bike. You'd think I was riding a regular bike. So in that regards, there's times when a bike like this is actually better. Yeah. So that's our riding review. Let's get back inside and we'll talk a little bit more. So who is this KBO Breeze Step Through made for? I think it's for the person who's looking for something that's going to be nice and quiet on the street, something that's going to be really smooth when they ride it, all right? They're not looking to take this off-road. They're not looking to, to turn it into a mountain bike. They're not looking to do that. They're looking for something they, they can ride on a daily basis, ride it on the street, ride it on the paths. Um, maybe you don't have a lots and lots of hills. That's the kind of person that would buy this KBO Breeze, okay? If you're if you're a person who has a lot of hills, you might want to look into the more powerful bikes. But if you got a average street, you've got an average path, you know, that has, you know, the kind of hills that I was going over. You have something like that, not a problem, okay? If you're not looking to be jolted off the bike because the the switch over from um from pedaling by yourself with some additional uh, uh, help from the motor or throttling, it's gonna jolt you right out of the seat. That's not this bike, okay? It's so smooth and so quiet, that's the type of ride you're gonna get with the KBO Breeze Step Through. So if you're looking for that type of thing, this might be a bike to consider, okay? Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. More things are coming down the road, so definitely stay tuned. Uh, but in the meantime, my wife is going to be taking this bike. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time.